Welcome. So we now have our Lorentz force, which is the combination of the charge times the electric field, the electric force, and the charge times the velocity crossed with the magnetic field, the magnetic force. And we've seen relativistic transforms, but let's put it into action a little bit. So we're gonna start by just finding the electric field, magnetic field, and force in what we call the lab frame of this. We've got two protons that have charge A and charge B, and they've got the same magnitude of velocity, but just going in opposite directions. So the first thing that we can do is we can find the electric field in our lab frame. So we can write this as the electric field in the lab frame, and that's just gonna be, right, one over four pi epsilon naught, times the charge, so that's charge of E, divide by the distance squared, D squared, and then the R hat is the direction that the uh, charge must go in order to get to the recipient, and so that is positive J hat. So we've done this for all semester nearly. We're hopefully feeling pretty good about it right as the pen dies. And so then we can find our magnetic field as well. So our magnetic field in our lab frame is gonna be mu naught over four pi. It's gonna be the charge of our actor, QB, times the velocity of our actor, V negative I hat, crossed with the direction to go, which is positive j hat, and we divide by the distance squared. So one thing we can do to get it to look more like our electric field is we can multiply by one, and we're gonna multiply by a specific value of one, which is epsilon naught divided by epsilon naught. So our magnetic field in our lab frame, u naught times epsilon naught, and then we can bring the four pi, we can bring the epsilon naught, we can bring the d squared, all in together, and we've got our QB, we've got our velocity, and then this cross product, we know that I hat crossed with J hat is equal to positive K hat, so negative I hat crossed with J hat is equal to negative K hat. So we can write our magnetic field in the lab frame, our one mu naught epsilon naught we can write as one over C squared. So we can write this as one over C squared QB times V over four pi epsilon naught D squared negative K hat. And so now we have our electric field and our magnetic field. So now we can find our force in this lab frame is the charge of the recipient, QA, times the electric field it feels, so QB over four pi epsilon naught, D squared in the positive J hat direction, plus the velocity of our recipient, VAL, which is V times plus I hat, crossed with the magnetic field, one over C squared, QBV over four pi epsilon naught D squared. Well, QB is a shared term, we can pull it out with the QA. Four pi epsilon naught, four pi epsilon naught, pull it out. And then the D squared as well. And so all we have left here is just J hat for this term, and then we have V times V divided by C squared. This is V squared over C squared, and then we have I hat crossed with negative K hat. Which gives us positive J hat. So we get a plus here. And so we can then factor out our J hat and we can write our force in this lab frame as QA, QB over four pi 
epsilon naught d squared, 1 plus v squared over c squared, j hat. Excellent. So we have our electric field, magnetic field, and force in the lab frame. Now let's take a look at these transforms. If we were to take a look at A being in its own rest frame and the recipient of forces, then we would have that the velocity of A in A's own rest frame is zero. And so then B is going to be considered to be traveling twice as far, twice as fast over here. So we have, right, this is the velocity of B in A's reference frame. So we can say B, BA is equal to 2V in the negative I hat. So now we do our relativistic transforms to find all of these. Which one do we use? Well, we can either use the top or the bottom. For the bottom, we have this 1 over c squared times the velocity. If our velocity is much, much less than the speed of light, we shouldn't be using this, or unless our magnetic field is so, so much more than the electric field. In this case, right, we're not really too sure. Our magnetic field has this 1 over c squared here too, and we don't really want to be at relativistic speeds, so we want to have our top equation, which the electric field is going to dominate because this divided by 1 over c squared, and we don't want speeds in which relativity has to be invoked, otherwise we get in a little bit of trouble. So in this case, we're finding the electric field in reference frame A, so then N is going to be A, and we're starting from a reference frame L, so every time we see M, we replace it with L. So we have EA is equal to EL plus the velocity Nm, so AL, which we conveniently have here, crossed with EL. So let's find that. So we have EL, which is QB over 4 pi epsilon naught d squared, positive j hat, plus VAL, which is V plus i hat crossed with BL, which is 1 over c squared, QBV over 4 pi epsilon naught d squared, and V negative k hat. Well, what does this look like? This is exactly the same as this, right? QB over 4 pi epsilon naught d squared, positive j hat, just that, plus V i hat, crossed with 1 over c squared, QBV over 4 pi epsilon naught d squared, negative k hat. Awesome. So then our E sub L is going to be this F sub L minus this QA from the top, right? Just inside these parentheses is exactly what this EA is going to be. So we have that our E sub A is going to be QB over 4 pi epsilon naught d squared, 1 plus V squared over C squared, J hat. Our BA is equal to just the B from the lab frame, so we have 1 over C squared, QBV over 4 pi epsilon naught D squared, and V negative K hat. Now, looking at our force in frame A, that's going to be equal to QA times our electric field in A plus the velocity of our recipient, which is VAA, which is zero, and we cross that with EA. So it turns out for this video, it doesn't matter how we do this magnetic field transform because we're going to take the cross product of it with zero anyway and get that. But this gives us that our FA is equal to QA times EA. So we have QA times what we just got here, QB over 4 pi epsilon naught d squared, 1 plus V squared over C squared, 
J hat. And wouldn't you know it, this result, the force in frame A, QA, QB over 4 pi epsilon D squared, 1 plus V squared or C squared J hat, is exactly the same as the force in the lab frame, QA, QB over 4 pi epsilon D squared, 1 plus V squared or C squared J hat. So even though our electric fields, one of these changed, right, this EA is different from EL, even though we have BAs and BLs being the same, the forces don't change. And we're going to find in the next video, right, a different reference frame in which this cross product is not zero to show why we need to have it be either or and not both at the same time.